He said some girl brought it over. He said he smoked it. He didn't inject it, but he said he smoked it. He's like, he's like, I smoked it, and I was just like, uh, and like he was like, I was so happy that I just melted. <laughs> that's, that's what he said. The heroin was. He was so happy he didn't even put it back. He's like, uh, that's called. Uh, there's like a feeling they call nodding off with heroin. You just wow, feel you're like you're gently bro. cocooned in a blanket of warmth and not even just love. Just you just don't care. You're so protected from the outside anxiety and stress. You know, it really affects people who are, so some people take care of and they're like, what's the big deal? I, I have a hypothesis that it's people who, and you shouldn't take heroin no matter what everybody, but I have a hypothesis that heroin affects people the most who are neurotic, anxious, stressed, who have trauma that they can't deal with because for the first time in their entire life, they feel what it's like to really feel free and not care about what's going on around them. And they've never felt that before. So it's like, uh -huh. that's why they just feel like so warm. And so they felt like they've had guards up their whole life and all of a sudden they just get, but people who don't have those same anxieties and neuroticisms, it affects differently. Yeah. And by the way, I'm speaking completely out of my butt right now because I've never done it, but. You know what's crazy is I actually just saw a video about toxic guilt and how people, some people have it trained in them from when they're kids. And it does feel like there's those traumas that you have. I guess people call it traumas, but basically there's these like underlying programs in you that are telling you like, you're not good enough. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do, you shouldn't do that. Or you're, you know, you're going to look like an idiot if you do this. Like you can see some people are stuck with certain types of programming it's kind of unconsciously put in. People say it's put in with traumas. And so maybe the heroin makes it all disappear. And they're just like, oh. Like it's the rest the of the time, there's these voices saying, you can't do this, you can't do that, you're right. not enough. Right, right. You get that you finally feel like what it's like to be normal for other people. You get to feel what it's like to be normal. And it's just, I want that. So, now there are, there are other parts to the addiction where eventually you're not just craving feeling normal, you're craving the opiates. I mean, yeah. I've heard the, there's a theory of addiction, which says that, you know, you partly try to fill a hole like of, you know, suffering or trauma. And that's true. I think that's why people go, you come for the trauma, you stay for the chemical dependency <laughs> is like yeah. how I think about it. So you come initially to heroin, not because you're like so excited about heroin, but because you're you have something wrong, right? Broken about you and you're self-medicating to basically yeah. try to fix yourself. Wow. But you're so progressive. You're so progressive right now, but go on. That's so nice what you're saying. That's that's correct. No, no, but I thought you'd have a tough love attitude about it. That like you're just a drug like, addict. Yeah. You need to fix you're it. You're doing this meta commentary on me. We're just talking about let's just talk. Let's, let's talk. talk. This no. is therapy time, okay? This is not analyze no, coffee zilla I'm happy for you. I'm happy that this more progressive side is coming out of you. <laughs> stop, stop. Less tough love and it's more just like, well, there's some underlying trauma that drove you to the heroin and that's fine. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You're right. You're well, right. then, and then you're a heroin addict and everyone's yeah, sort of forced to deal with you and it becomes a massive, massive burden. And it's unfortunate. Yeah. I had a, well, anyway, I can't talk too much about it, but I've seen firsthand the impact of the fentanyl crisis. So God. there's the heroin part and then there's this other completely new so heroin was bad enough everyone was already yeah. like heroin was rated five stars on yelp and then one star by all the people who were like now trying to quit right they're like ah oh, this actually yeah. is not great but then fentanyl walks in the door and it's like hey heroin is now russian roulette maybe you're gonna have a great trip maybe you're gonna nod off maybe you're gonna be normal you're gonna escape your problems maybe i'm just gonna kill you and you're just gonna die of an opiate overdose now but what do you think about the oxys dude i heard oxys are the shit and they're basically heroin no they're also laced with fentanyl. Oh, they're released with fentanyl too, yeah. the oxys? Yeah. So my buddy, he got he gets prescribed there this is how fucking good they are. He gets prescribed these oxys. Well, one time his brother, he said, got prescribed oxys by a doctor, and then he it took him two years to get off of that shit. No, yes. It's it's so He's serious. And by the way, you're on for two years, and then after two years, all you do is think about it. You're still fighting the addiction. So my boy, he he breaks his leg and they're offering him oxys. Yeah. He's like, it's I don't insane. want this shit, whatever. But he, I think he took some home. Of course. Dude, he said it was gone next day. And he's like, he's like, dude, my dad and my brother fucking jacked my oxys. <laughs> they stole it. I'm like, that's, that's... good shit. Dude. Well, he kind of got, probably got saved by his dad and brother. Yeah. No, no, he wouldn't, he wasn't going to take him. He, he would not. He doesn't take like, he won't take an Advil. He won't take a Tylenol. Like he doesn't take anything. He just thinks, hey, do you know people like that? Are you like that? Like, 
Do you know those like I don't take any I drugs. used to be I so I used to be a hard liner. That's how I was about I so I never have done any drugs. I haven't ever I hadn't ever drank any alcohol and I wouldn't do any kind like not even Advil. I was against Advil. But by the time I was 21 I realized okay you can be, mo there is something to moderation. I mean, it's like, you don't have to be a teetotaler to, yeah. you know, there's there's a balance in life. So I said, you know what? I'm such a dork. Like I read the studies on addiction and I was like, actually, if I start drinking alcohol now, the likelihood of addiction is super low. Like <laughs> turns oh, out, turns up. out if you drink later in your life, the likelihood of drink, basically getting addicted. This is true of weed. It's really true of alcohol. Basically, the later it takes you to start something, the more developed your frontal lobe is, the less your body, the, the more your body knows what it's like to just operate without so that when yeah. you start doing it, you're not in this frame of mind where you go, oh, I need this now to operate wow. normally. So we should be telling kids not to do drugs, basically. Well, we that do though, but then no one listens. We do the same thing with alcohol. We're like, hey, don't drink until you're 21. And everyone's like, ah, I want to do it now. Yeah. It's too bad because alcohol, it does feel like it's destroyed. It's like has a bad impact on the culture. Yeah. Like the amount it's of unhealthy. like the hospital's full of like, there's alcohol and then there's like light livable alcoholism that causes like maybe some types of diabetes yeah or like liver fat. failure you know you're just or obese it, it's or fat yeah those are like really bad like my dad was in the hospital for diabetes uh, he was getting the um he had the thing at home where it just cleans out your it does a job of your kidney, dialysis dialysis he, he had the home one he went to the hospital and he was in a room full of people doing the blood one dude the blood one they're like this they're like they're out of it man they don't they're not enjoying like they're in pain 24 7. yeah they're just laying in beds and yeah. if, this was like from 18 all the way up to like 85 year olds and some of them have been doing it like that for 10 years some 15 but for hours of the day but isn't there There's isn't there something so sick about that because you're so much in pain that what do you want more than a painkiller it's like the sick get sicker it's like the healthy get healthier the sick get sicker life is a cruel beast in that way yeah it is it is and we're all gonna die in the end yeah lighten the mood though lighten the mood keep it light enjoy the moment you know because it will it, how do you suffering... feel about death are you worried about death i'm starting to figure it out it's something that everyone has to figure out though so i should tell people that it's something that you have to start thinking about and figuring out your parents are gonna die. Think about like, what are you gonna do for that? Has that happened to you yet? I mean, I know your mom's yeah, my dad, not. My dad passed away. My dad passed. That's away. right. I knew that actually. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. And my my mom's pretty sick right now, man. I mean, she's uh, she had like, there's a surgery they were supposed to do. They went in for the surgery. While she's there, she's so like like yells at us all the time. Like even now, she's like someone calls when she's sick. She's like, hey, you do this, you do this, you get water, you do. This. You so I love your mom. Your mom's awesome, dude. But then someone calls, she goes, hello, still sick. <laughs> okay. Like, she'll do that. And then so, I'll go rip on somebody and be like, you're fat. And then just come back, like, just hang on. Like, hey, you sit down, you move. Yeah, like, she's just like yelling at people, calling people fat, that, whatever. That is what's funny, though, is, is you have this thing in your head where everyone goes, oh, they'll soften up like when they're sick and it's some people do but most people they just double down they're just like nah dude you get cranky too man you get the, the, the blood sugars of course. The blood sugars going up and down your body's in pain yes you almost have to be like the little baby that's like crying for more attention because they're like man man like give me food whatever they kind of get like that they're a little bit like they need help whatever it's fine but She's, she's pretty cool, actually. She's pretty cool overall. But while she was in the hospital for the one surgery, she's like wheezing, whatever. And me and my sister are like, what is a mom? She's like, I don't know, something. Okay, it's not a, she's like, heart attack? And I'm like, it's, me and my sister's like, it's not a heart attack. Like, calm down. We just think she's being drama queen. It was a heart attack. It was, it was she had two. Yeah. They put in a How bad do you feel for being like, ah, you're fine. I feel better because my sister was there and she did it too. Yeah, we yeah, were yeah, both yeah, doing yeah, it. Right. You're both like, mom, come on, stop. Stop, you're embarrassing us. Calm stop, down. mom. No, because we were, they were even getting mad at her for like, like she's telling the nurse like, hey, you, uh, you clean my underwear. Like something like that. Like she's telling the nurse to like clean her underwear. Like oh, do yeah. weird shit. Like they're so nice to her. And, and then they'll just... do extra shit. She's making them do extra That's shit. So my sad. dad would do that too. That's they're great. So twisted. And the moral of the story is, you are loved because you are loved. Such is the nature of love and kindness. Okay? So now that I've done my karmas, make sure you do your karmas. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and sign up for meditation. Ascension is upon us, foolish! Sign up for meditation immediately! Ha! <sighs> Am I still here? F